Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a video that was actually requested by one of my subscribers. So I thought that would be fun. What it is, is my top product in every category. Most of these categories, I was able to keep it to only one product. There are a couple that have two, but for the most part, this is just the best of the best currently in my collection. So this does not include items that I don't currently have. Um, it's just what is here and what is now. This also doesn't include new products to me that I have not yet fully reviewed because there's one I'm eyeing right now that maybe would be making this list, but I feel like it's too soon to give it that spot. So if I haven't reviewed it, it won't be featured here. Uh, these are just everything that I've been loving. I would highly recommend. It's at the top of my loves list. I think that, you know, you would love it. It's one of my favorites, those kind of things. The best of the best in my collection. I'm gonna go through the, you know, all the products, primer, foundation, concealer, blush, eyeshadow, all of those things. And then at the end, um, I'm also just gonna kind of mention a couple products that like, I'm not giving a recommendation in that category because I personally can do without that. I don't, I don't feel like I need it. And then I'm also gonna do a category of tools. There are three tools in my collection that I feel like are game changers. So I wanna mention those as well. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump in because I've kind of been rambling for a second now. And yeah, let's go. Uh. <laughs> okay, so let's just start where we usually start. Eye primer. The products that are number one in my collection that I would highly recommend is the Ulta Beauty Matte Primer. This is really nice if you're a girly who likes the Urban Decay Protion Primer or the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. This gives a really similar, almost the same effect. There is a slight tint. It doesn't give a ton of coverage, but it dries down really nice and creates a beautiful base for eyeshadow. I have no issues with it. There's no like grabbing or inability to blend. This does a fabulous job. It's super inexpensive, like $12 when it's not on sale, but the Ulta collection line typically does sales. Like I got this for $6. So just wanna throw that out there. The next product is the NYX Glitter Primer. I have said this before, if you like shimmers, you need this. It just enhances them always on the eye and gives that beautiful sparkle. It holds them in, it prevents them from creasing because when you use this, like this is for your mattes. That initial matte layer isn't gonna crease. But when you get to the shimmers, like those formulas are different. They're more emollient. They have different oils in them, those kinds of things. So I find that I get the best longevity when I use this glitter primer because it just locks that shimmer in. And you guys, keep in mind, I'm someone that oh, on average has my makeup on for at least 12 hours. Unfortunately, it's a lot longer than that sometimes, like easily anywhere from 14 to 16. So all of this makeup is long wearing makeup too. I just wanted to mention that. But yeah, these are my top two primer, eye primer recommendations. Next for face primer. I have two, although I feel that they could be counted kind of differently. The first product is the Milani Bright Side Illuminating Primer. If you want an illuminated base that gives a nice glow, very like, I wouldn't say coverage, but it does have a little bit of a tint to it. This is so good. It literally just feels so hydrating under my foundation. And every foundation I've used on top of it, it plays well with. It like the foundation will lay on top of this so nicely and my longevity is good. It doesn't break things up. If you want an illuminating primer, this is my top recommendation. It's a go-to in my collection. I actually set it aside for a little bit to use a different one and I pulled it back out the other day because I was like, man, you know what I'm missing? 
my Milani primer. So yeah, absolutely obsessed with this one. The next product that, like I said, I'm putting it in the primer category, but also could be counted differently is the It Cosmetics Hello Sunshine Hydrating Serum Sunscreen with SPF 50. The reason I'm putting it in primer is because they market it as being a serum primer for under your makeup. And that's like pretty much the only reason that I was like, oh, okay, like I'll give this a go because I typically don't wear sunscreen under my makeup because a lot of sunscreens pill on me when I do that. And it's just not worth all the extra time and the energy. However, I find you don't have that with this. The consistency, when you put it out, it, it, it looks white, but you rub it in and it, oh man, I will link the get ready with me that I use this in so you can see if you want to go look, but it just, oh, it sinks into the skin so beautifully and so quickly. It does not leave a white cast. It gives the most beautiful glow. I'm wearing it today. We can still see some glow coming through, but I do not look oily. I just, oh my God. It is so good. Like this, I will repurchase this. This is something that I will wear all summer. My makeup lays beautifully over it. No pilling, no dryness. It doesn't get greasy. Like I honestly, like I still can't believe how good it is. That's how good it is. And I'm not a sunscreen girly, but this is phenomenal. So if you're someone who loves to wear sunscreen under your makeup, Highly recommend you try this out. If you're someone who doesn't usually because you don't like the hassle and it usually doesn't work out, if you decide to try something again, I would try this one because yeah, before I was like, ain't no way, way too much work, not about it. But this has just been great. I feel like it increases the longevity of my makeup as well because it has like a slight, a slight grip. I feel like it really just adheres super well to the foundation. So yeah, that's why I put it in primers. Fucking love this stuff. The next product is a corrector. Yes, yes. The Huda Beauty Faux Filter Corrector in the shade Peach. I love this. I use it every day. It cancels out my darkness so well and so effectively. And it also plays well under concealer. It doesn't get cakey or thick or creasy. It just, uh, it becomes one with my skin, making it better. I have talked about this a dumb amount of times. So you guys are probably like, we know. But like, I had to mention it. So yeah. Next up for concealer. Whoa, needed a drink there. So for concealer, I picked the Natasha Denona High Glam. I have the shade 2N. I am wearing it today. I have like just a dot of a different concealer on the inner corner, but this is one of the best that I have tried. Uh, I like this and the Hourglass one, I think the best. I like that this is really lightweight, but still provides coverage. I have super minimal creasing when I wear it. It wears really well, has that longevity piece. But what really gets me about this is it is the most true neutral tone base product I think I've ever tried. And that's what makes a huge difference. Like this looks so much darker in the component or even in swatch. But when you get it onto the eyes, if you have a neutral undertone, it's, it's so insane how good it looks because it actually is your tone. Whereas like a lot of other, you know, brands claiming to have neutral tone, I often find they're pretty warm or they're pretty yellow, but this is a true neutral. And I think that that really just makes such a huge difference in how well it looks under my eyes. I think that this will probably be one I do repurchase just because it is really good. Um, the other one I have is nice. However, it's like too brightening for me right now. So I just put a pop in the inner corner, but that shade range isn't good. So I wouldn't even really be able to bump up. But yeah, I could definitely see myself repurchasing this one. For foundation, the one that I picked is the KBD Good Apple Balm. I have the shade 012. 
This is marketed, I believe, as a light neutral, and it does pull a smidge warm on me in the winter, which is kind of why, why I put it away. I use the fuck out of it. Man, there's like a, uh, a hair that is like just, oh, I see it. Sorry, I just spent the last couple of minutes chasing down a hair on my face. I don't even remember where I left off, um, but I still clearly used the crap out of it, even though it was a little too um, deep for me. But going into the summer, I think the shade is going to be absolutely perfect and I cannot wait to use it. Like I've still been pulling it out periodically because I miss it. My skin just looks so insanely good when I use this product. I did a super in-depth review over on IG. Um, I just want to mention though, a little goes a long way. If you use a ton of this, you will experience a cakey look. A little bit goes a really long way and that just gives you like the most juicy, like flawless airbrushed face. Like it is stunning. I love it. I was honestly, I remember being so nervous to try it, but I'm glad I finally did. And this often actually goes on sale for half off. So if you're like on the fence, wait for a sale because there will be one. But yeah, this is just freaking incredible. The other product that I want to recommend is a liquid foundation, but it's too soon. It's too soon to recommend it, but I'm eyeing it. It's, it's nice. Next up would be a bronzer. And they currently only have technically three bronzers. And well, I have three. Yes, no, I just have three. I have three bronzers in my collection. They're all cream. Um, I have one that is technically labeled as a highlighter, but I use it as a glowy bronzer. But the product I'm gonna mention is the Chanel Le Beige Cream Bronzer. It's the one I'm wearing today. I have the medium shade. This is really nice. It is so easy to work with. I think it's very beginner friendly. So if you're someone who's starting out with creams, I really like this one. The formula isn't stiff, but it's not super emollient. It is that really nice, like, you know, buttery texture that's not overly creamy where you warm it up and it's kind of messy. And it's not that like stick, like really stiff product where it's like it's hard to blend because it gets muddy and it just sticks to your skin. It is like the perfect in between. I was really worried about the shade when I initially purchased it, you know, like how long ago, was that, like two years ago. Um, but the shade works really nice. You get so much product in here. Um, I did wanna say it does have a cinnamony scent. So if that bugs you, it does have that. So I wanted to mention that. But yeah, this will probably be like the product that will expire before I can even use it up. And that's the thing, like it's dumb expensive, but it's really good. And there's also so much in it, so much in it. But yeah, this one just blends out really easily, looks good, long lasting, all the things. Definitely the best one in my collection right now. Okay, for blush, I struggled a little bit. This is one of the categories that will have two because I was like, mm, really back and forth. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just include them both. The first one probably isn't gonna be a surprise. It is the Kaja Dewy Bars. These are so fucking good. These are so good. If you like a glowy, dewy blush, look no farther. Here they are. They are beautiful on the skin they look dewy and they look dewy all day and i don't think that they look greasy or oily i think they just look dewy you know um they don't get like carried away or icky in my opinion these also are easy to work with like they don't come out of the gate god my hair's driving me insane you guys like i don't know what's going on here well i do know i need to wash it but anyways um they don't come out of the gate like overly pigmented and hard to work with, but they are pigmented. And I know that probably doesn't make sense, but if you get one, you'll know what I mean. I go in and I just stamp, like stamp a brush on the top and then I apply it. And I find that they are super easy to work with. They blend out beautifully. They feel hard to mess up, honestly. 
and they're so long lasting. Literally at the end of a 14 hour day, these look fresh as fuck. Like I just applied them. It is so impressive. I don't know. I just, they are, they, they did something with these. They did something with these. They are incredible. If you're down for a dewy blush, I do not think that you would regret these. I have the shade Grapefruit Gelato right over here. And then I have the shade Fig Smoothie right over here. And these shades, like I initially was kind of, but they, again, they do something special. I feel like looks that I think these would not pair well with, I've paired them with it and it looks good. They don't, like once you get them rubbed into the skin and they start really playing with your natural warmth and stuff, I feel like they kind of adhere to like whatever's going on. Um, I know they're not magical, but like they just, the tones play so well with a lot of tones that you would not anticipate them playing well with, I guess is like what I want to say. I just, I think that these are so nice. Um, I, I know a lot of people get PR from Kaja. I don't. I got this one from Skeepers and I loved it so much that I bought one. So I don't know if that helps you or not. Cause I know some people are weird about taking recommendations from people that got stuff for free, which if you worry about that, then you probably shouldn't take their recommendation regardless. Um, but yeah, I purchased one on my own and then, uh, got the other one through Skeepers, but I love so good. Highly recommend the next product, which is like a completely different finish, but is also equally as incredible is the Danessa Myricks Dewy Cheek and Lip Palette. I have, um, the deeper one. I always forget what it's called. But you get one, you get so much product. Like, look at that. Look how thick those babies are. You get so much product. And I know these tones look intimidating, but like when you get them out and onto the cheek, they are the most delicious, more natural leaning tones of blush. They are beautiful. Like if you're someone who likes more nudie toned blushes for that natural flush, look no farther. You can mix it in with this one to even make it lighter or to neutralize it a little bit. Um, I like mixing these two or I like mixing all of them with this one, but I also really like mixing these two in the middle together. And the nice thing is these apply well under powder and over powder. They apply beautifully that way. They dry down to a more like satin finish. They don't um, dry down like matte and they don't stay dewy. They have a really beautiful natural finish to them. I just think that these are nice. They're unlike anything in my collection or really unlike anything that I've tried before. So love these would highly recommend the next palette the next palette the next product is a uh, technically it's marketed as a face palette but i mostly used it for like more typical highlighting properties and it's the dior backstage glow face palette and this one is in the shade glitz and i have been absolutely obsessed with this. I use them on their own. I mix them all of the above. I love to use it like on like a typical highlight. I also love using it on the brow bone. Uh, I've used them as like toppers for some extra sparkle. I have used the bronze shade as well as like a topper on the bronzer. I really just love this. I love reaching for it. I think it is so so pretty. They are so sparkly, lightweight, easy to use. I actually I have this shade on my inner corner today and then I have it on my brow bone as well. They are just, they're so pretty. I love them. So these would be like the top highlighters in my collection. Next is a setting product. It won't be a surprise to anyone. It is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Setting Powder. Um, this is the shade Cherry Blossom. I have a few shades. I have Translucent, um, which is like sugar cookie, I think, maybe. And then I have a skin tone shade and a peach shade. So I do have a few of these. 
I love them all. I think they're incredible. I never used to be a loose powder girly until I tried this and it is just game changing. I have it on today. The way that it just blurs and imperfects the skin, but also locks in my makeup, increases longevity, is just out of this world. The cherry one is more for brightening and I use that on the under eyes. I've also used it all over the face though. But typically I use this for the under eyes and then I use the sugar cookie, which is the translucent shade all over the face. So you can see I've been using it. So yeah, I absolutely love these best powder. I probably, I don't really have interest to try any other powders to be honest, because it is, it is so good. Uh, the next product is gonna be liners. I wanted to mention a felt tip liner, um, the one I'm wearing today. This is the Sex Kitten from Tarte. It's a holy grail. I've repurchased this so many times, it's dumb. But this is what the tip looks like. It's a really nice balance between firm and also having some flexibility to it. I like the shape. You can get a really fine line in there, as you can see on the top. But also, it's really easy to build it up out here. It's a nice black it is long lasting super easy to work with i absolutely love this felt tip liner and then for the liner that i will use to do like my waterline and tight line is the huda beauty creamy cold liner this is the black one it stays in my waterline so freaking well like hours on hours it is jet black, beautiful, I love it. This is like my fourth or fifth one of these. Holy grail, highly recommend. For brows, I like was kinda about mentioning because like I don't try a lot of brow gels or anything. So the one I have open is the Wing Me Clear Brow Gel. I enjoy it, I think it's great. It does a really nice job. I have some other brow gels in my collection that I haven't tried and are unopened because I only keep one open at a time. I find that brow gels go bad easily, like their formula goes off. So I only keep one open. So I wouldn't say this is my holy grail brow gel, but it is nice and I've been using it. For a brow pencil, the one I have right now is the NYX Professional Micro Brow Pencil. And that's what I have on my brows right now. This is beautiful, it does a really great job, has a fine tip, it lasts in the brows, makes it really easy to shape and draw hairs. I think this is absolutely incredible. If you want a more affordable option, I love the e.l.f. Instant Brow Lift Pencil. I've repurchased that one, I can't even count how many times. It is so good. It is like the tip is wider than the micro brow. So like you can't do as much detail work with it. And I feel like a lot of people prefer something you can do detail with, which I do think looks nicer, but that elf one is like $3 and this one is like 12 or something. So I think that I will repurchase this and I will just like rotate it in with my um, elf one. So I'm kind of using like both, but really been loving this one so that's what I've been using in my brows and enjoying next up is lip products and this one's not going to come as a surprise for lip oils I would 120% recommend the Milani fruit fetish lip oils these are so good they're hydrating they have a really nice high shine finish they have a bunch of different scents I think they smell so good they are very affordable they are hands down my favorite lip oil and I feel like I've kind of tried a lot, but I love this lip oil. I've repurchased, I don't know how many, I've, I've gone through a lot of these, but I love this and highly recommend it. For a lip liner, I was kind of drawn between two and I decided to go with this one because the shade range is better. It is the Makeup uh, Forever Artist Pencil. You can use this as liner or eyeliner i just use it as a lip liner and they have so many shades and colors of this i love that it is a wooden pencil it's sharpenable it really just offers that nice balance of creamy and waxy all in one very easy to use comfortable on the lips the other one that i wanted to recommend that is slightly creamier 
And then this one is the Tower 28 lip liners, but they only have three shades. So I just feel like even though this formula is so good, there's only three shades. So that just kind of really sucks. But formula wise, these would definitely be my top two lip liners. Next up for lipstick, this was easy. <laughs> the Prada Beauty lipsticks. I I hate how much I love them, but they are so good. They are, like I said, the Prada Beauty Soft Matte Lipsticks. And this is like the component they come in. They have really beautiful embossing. Not that that's gonna last like super long. They're refillable. And I have the shade Caramel, which is this one right here beautiful. And then I also have the shade beige, which is this one right here. Right there. And these are both marketed as cooler tones and they actually are, which is like another problem. Like when stuff's marketed as cool and then it's warm and I know it plays different on everyone. So like for me, these are marketed as cool tones and they actually perform as cool tones. Um, this one is like a brown cool tone neutral. And then this one was like a um, neutral cool tone situation. But either way, they both pull cool on me. I absolutely love the shades and the formula is phenomenal. It's marketed as soft matte. And I would 100% agree with that because even though it looks matte and has like a more matte leaning finish, it's still hydrating. It's still comfortable on the lips. You can still move the product around like on your lips throughout the day. I think where the matte claim really comes in is the longevity of these lipsticks. They are so long lasting. Like I think the other day on my Instagram stories, I, I used the example of I had put this on in the morning before I left for work. I'd had cup of coffee, um, coffee through a straw, and I had a donut, and I didn't have to reapply until after lunch. Like I did all of that in my lipstick, like it looked a little faded, but it still looked good. It wasn't absolutely destroyed. I just feel like these sit so nicely on the lips and they're so comfortable and they just, they, they yeah, they feel comfortable, they look good. Like, I know that you're like, man, you said this a hundred times, but I feel like I just cannot adequately describe how much I love these. They have that like kind of old makeup-y scent, like the OG makeup with like a little bit of a touch of floral, um, but I find it's not very strong and it fades, so it doesn't like bother me. But at the end of the day, I just really love these because of the tones. And then just like the formula is so good. Like these are what I reach for. I have to actively remind myself to use other lipsticks because these are just so good, you guys. I know the price point is crazy, so don't feel pressured to get them. But if you want to get them and you have the means to do so, Highly, highly recommend, like, I don't think you'll regret it. The formula is just amazing. Um, next up is a product that I don't, like it was, I didn't really have like a favorite because I don't use it all the time and I don't feel like it's a product that I need. And that's a setting spray. I use the Charlotte Tilbury, Ter 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 yeah, yeah. I took a break and I still can't talk the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. And like, I use it clearly, but I don't really feel like it's a necessity, especially because I use the Huda Easy Bake. This does all I need it to use. I don't need the spray. I just kind of like it at this point. It's fun, you know, just, ooh, whatever. But this is like one that's just like, I don't really care if I have it. It's either here nor there kind of situation. I unfortunately don't have a mascara recommendation right now. I hate all of mine. So if you have a mascara recommendation, let me know in the comments. My preferences are volume, 
to the point of a little bit clumpy, lengthening, and it can hold a curl. That's what I like. If you have suggestions, please leave them in the comment because comments because yeah, I need I need a mascara. Next up is eyeshadow palettes, and then we'll go to tools. The I feel like you guys can probably guess at least two of these, but top three palettes in my collection, if I had to get rid of everything else, like honestly, this was such an easy decision for me. Top three would be the Natasha Denona Viva palette. I love this one. It's still, in my opinion, one of the best palettes she has ever put out to date. You get such a range of tones. You have cool tones, you have warm tones, you have orange tones, peachy tones, yellow tones. You have so many different tones that offer so much variety. I know you only get three shimmers and I thought that would kind of be a drawback, which I think for some people, they also feel that way. But really these shimmers play well with pretty much everything. The only thing I find that you don't really have like a great shimmer for is these grays down here. This shimmer is on the like cooler, brighter side. So like it can work with the gray tones, but I don't prefer it that way. Usually when I use those tones, I just do an all matte look and that's fine. I actually do a lot of matte looks with this because I just think the tones and the shades, like they're so pretty. So I don't mind it being matte at all. I just think that this is so versatile and the formula is so good. This is like my all time favorite black. I almost prefer this half the time over a liner because it's just so, so rich and pigmented and easy to manipulate. Like this is the best for a smoked out wing. It looks so good every time. Love that black shade. Um, but yeah, this is definitely 100% top in my collection. The next palette would be the Natasha Denona Star Palette. And I know this one is newer, but I had another one that I used and abused last year. So like I am familiar with the color story. Although I will say now that I have one that's not expired, this has been a different experience, but in an elevated way. So I love it more than I loved the other one because like these shades actually pack so much pigment. You get so much sparkle from these. And I just, yeah, the tones are just so much truer to what they're supposed to be. And you get so much versatility in here. Like I feel like the majority of the palette it does pull pretty cool. Um, but you can get something warmer out of it if you want. But yeah, I just, this is beautiful for when I want a pop of color, when I want something cool toned and neutral. That's my go-to, cool tone and neutral with this baby. It's, uh. but I also just love the pops that you get here. And the formula is amazing. I, uh, yeah, mm, 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 mm. shimmers are great, mattes are great all super great. Um, yeah, this is one that I reached for a lot last year and I've been reaching for again this year. It's just one that offers a lot and one that I find myself wanting to use. And I think she discontinued this again. I, um, oh wait, no, it wasn't this one. It was the gold palette. I went to get on and look and it wasn't on her side anymore. So I think she discontinued that again, which is like really annoying. But yeah, love, love, love this one. Um, highly recommend. It would be, you know, one of the the two that I would have to have to have. The next one, I put it with the eyeshadow palettes because some people will classify it as an eyeshadow palette. Others would classify it as a face palette because it's technically marketed as a face palette. And that's where it is in my inventory, but I'm including it here. Um, this is my go-to face palette. It's the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette, and this is in the shade Light. You will see mine is dirty, actually. Maybe I should have cleaned it, but dirty. This, 
I cannot even put into words the actual magic that this does. This is what I reach for when I want to put in the absolute bare fucking minimum of effort, but still look glam as hell. This right here. Literally, the mattes are beautiful in terms of tone and formulation. They blend themselves. They build up nicely. I have no qualms or issues with them. And then these shimmers are insane. Like they are, like I've never experienced shimmers like this in any of Natasha's other palettes. I wish that she would do more of this formula because they are so just like, high shine and sparkly, which they don't really look like it right there in a swatch. But when you get them on the eye, <sighs> I have a lot of looks over on IG using this. Um, as you can tell, it is loved. I have three pans. I'm working on one right here. It's also deep, but yeah, the shadows in here are top notch. Like I said, minimal effort, maximum payoff. And then it also comes with this blush and this highlight. This blush is absolutely gorgeous. I love this cream formula. The tone is like a really pretty um, neutral light like mauve. And I feel like it ties in really well with all of the shades and the palette. It's very like juicy, but not oily, easy to work with, easy to blend. I clearly love it. And then the highlighter in here is actually the other one that was up for my favorite highlighter in my collection. But I was like, I include this in face palettes, so I wanted to have it kind of separated. But if I didn't do that, then this probably would be my favorite highlight, I would say. Just because like it is so, like, look at that. <sighs> I use this as a, well, you can tell. I use this as an inner corner and a brow bone all the time because it is blinding, blinding. And obviously, I mean, it has that same effect on the cheek as well. But if you don't want it that, um, like, blinding, you can do things to kind of, like, diffuse it. There it is. Like, but it is just... Oh, stunning. It is so pretty. Like, honestly, if, if she would have had like a cream bronzer in here, and this would be the only thing I would ever need forever. Like it is like, I love it. Obviously it's very beat up and used, which I love when stuff looks like that. But yeah, this is phenomenal. If you like a face, well, even if you don't like a face palette, because I was not really into face palettes until I got this and it kind of got me back into them because I'm like, oh, it's kind of nice when I travel to have the majority of all in one. And I feel like a lot of times face palettes are kind of half-assed, so they're not actually all in one. But this is almost, if it had a cream bronzer, it would be it. But this like, I love because I'm like, oh, I can do a flawless, glamorous, eyeshadow look and I can have a blush and a highlight in here that I love like it just checked all the boxes so I love this and I highly highly recommend the next three products are tools like we talked about first tool is an eyelash curler this one is from Shiseido someone in the community recommended this to me literally three years ago still have it still going strong Super high quality, performs so well. The best eyeshadow, the best eyelash curler I have ever used does not rip your lashes and it's not harsh. I actually only just changed out this rubber thing like this year because the other one held up fine. So this is like a pricier one. It's like 20 some dollars. It's from Shiseido, but in my opinion, 120% worth it. So, so stinking good and such, such great quality. The next product is a sponge. Mine is dirty. I'm I'm doing I'm washing my brushes tonight. It is from a brand called UV, and they're like antibacterial micro like anti antibacterial sponges, and essentially that makes them like easier to wash and less likely to gain bacteria and be like 
have longer lifespans essentially. And this, oh, my makeup looks the best when I use it. The, like the way it's like so soft, but not in a way that's like overly so and like picks your makeup back up. It's just very soft. It expands really nicely, gentle on the skin, blends everything out, doesn't pick makeup up. Like it is the sponge of sponges. And I've tried a lot of sponges. This is the one, like this is the only one I will be repurchasing moving forward. I have like two right now from Real Techniques, but once those cash out, I'm only buying these. They're incredible. And then if you're someone who uses a beauty puff to set your under eyes or your face, the one I would highly recommend is the one from Beauty Blender, also needs washed. This side here is like a really nice fluffy material. This is like a more spongy material. I don't even use this side, never use that side. I just use this side. You can put your like fingers in it like this for to help with control, or you can put them on the back here, whichever you prefer. But this is just so soft in the way that the like bristles sit is so nice like i literally will dip into my powder and then rub it out on my hand a little bit and tap everything out and i can tell when i don't use this and i use one of my other puffs because my makeup looks so much better with this puff especially my under eyes like it ensures that everything is like set and all my fine lines and stuff so that nothing is like cakey or extra creasy or gunking up like this is so good it is the puff of puffs i'm telling you so if you like puffs this is the puff but yeah whew. anyway that is all i was trying to make this short but i feel like it probably still ended up kind of long but if you were curious i hope that this was helpful in narrowing down some of like what i love this is like ultimately what i would recommend because this is like the best of the best in my collection right now so i hope it was helpful if you guys enjoyed it um please do give it a thumbs up share it comment um whatever is appreciated i just appreciate that you're here and that you're watching and i hope that you guys enjoy the rest of your day i will talk to you soon bye